I've been talking a lot, especially in 2015, about the ascension of energy on the planet and what it means. And I've been talking about that more in general terms, but I get um, asked questions also about the idea of living in third and fourth dimension versus fifth dimension. So we're getting a little bit more esoteric about things. And so today I wanted to go a little bit more into the details of what exactly is the fifth dimension because a lot of spiritual teachers are talking about the planet entering a new phase, a new energy system that's basically called fifth dimension and what that means on a day-to-day -day level. So third and fourth dimension, simply you can think about it in terms of matter. Uh, third and fourth dimension are defined by matter. So a chair, uh, a person, a TV, a car, all of the things around you that constitute matter, uh, that is a form of living in the third and fourth dimension. Fourth dimension is just the addition of time on top of that. So when we think about time in linear terms, we're operating under the construct of thirds and fourth dimension. The fifth dimension is a whole other thing. In the fifth dimension, there's a pulling away from matter. And the way that I like to describe this is in comparing third, fourth, and fifth dimension is by saying that in the third and fourth dimension, it's identified by identification with matter. So, so that's your characteristic of the third and fourth dimension, identification with matter. And what does that mean? It means really, in essence, what Buddhists call attachment. So what does this look like to be identified with matter? It means that you are attached to something or multiple things in your life that if you lose that something, it completely rattles your internal environment. You don't even know what to do with yourself. Why? Because that matter, either in the form of a person or a thing, has been used to define you. And when you lose it, you have lost your sense of identity. And this can happen whether it's the disintegration of a relationship, for instance, that's the disappearance of matter. It's literally a person that you love disappears from your life. That causes a lot of suffering. If it causes a lot of suffering, you know that you are attached to that. So that's third and fourth dimension. It's living in a prism where you are identified with all of the things that are occurring in your outside 3D environment. Fifth dimension, the characteristic of fifth dimension is interaction with matter. And that's very different. A being that is vibrating in fifth dimension, which is an energy level that's a, a lot higher than third and fourth, a being that is vibrating in fifth dimension still walks around in third and fourth. We still walk around and we have a car, we still have a house. So on the outside, a person that's vibrating in fifth dimension may not look any different than a person who's vibrating in third and fourth dimension, but there's a profound difference and that is the person that is vibrating with an energy of fifth dimension interacts with his or her environment, but is not identified with it. So how is this different in a day-to-day -day life? Suppose I use the example of a relationship. Let's say that a couple who lives in fifth dimension, their relationship ends and they each go their ways. There's no suffering involved in the disintegration of this relationship. Why? because each person in that relationship was not identified or attached to that relationship in any way. So that when it ends, the two people can go on their merry ways and not suffer endlessly with the end of that relationship. But I could give another example also. Suppose I get, I buy a brand new car and I crash that car and completely total it. A person who lives in fifth dimension will not feel the slight bit suffering that they've just totaled their new car. Why? Because that car, they weren't attached to it. it. That car, that piece of material doesn't define them in any way. So you see, a person who is vibrating in fifth dimension interacts with 3D world and uses the material world, but is never identified with it. 
So that's the easiest way for me to answer questions about third, fourth, and fifth dimension. Third and fourth dimension, there's an identification with matter. Fifth dimension, there's an interaction with matter. And the planet as a whole, in terms of collective consciousness, we are moving into fifth dimension very quickly. There are more and more people that are living in fifth dimension, but there have really always been people living in fifth dimension. Our great spiritual teachers, are masters and have been for thousands of years masters of living in the fifth dimension even when the rest of us were walking the planet living in third and fourth it's just that right now the energy of the planet so many more people are waking up and ascending into a fifth dimensional collective consciousness and pretty soon that's what's going to exist on the majority of the planet will be a collective consciousness of fifth dimension we're still not at that tipping point where the whole of the planet is vibrating in fifth dimension in terms of collective consciousness, but we're getting there. There's more and more and more people waking up to the fifth dimension. And that's really it, uh, the gist of it, I guess. It can get more complicated, but there you have it, the difference between third, fourth, and fifth dimension. Have a great week, everyone.